find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 15, uh, where we talk indie wrestling. Of course, uh, thanks, of course, to uh, Basic Sickness for that awesome intro. Check out more of his music over at basicsickness.com. And of course, you can find out more about this show over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and other things we do about non-indie wrestling amongst other things and you can drop us a line at uh good times at wrestling mayhem show.com we got an email that we won't forget to read at the end of the show because this is birthday uh or drop us a line at 412 wms 0 twitter at mayhem show facebook google plus all that kinds of stuff itunes youtube we're all over the place audio video form of course i'm mike sorg sorgatron on the twitters uh and uh this show where uh, a couple of guys that are a little bit into indie wrestling uh, myself here in pittsburgh of course with the iwc and rwa respectively doing video production and other projects like something called finding zach gowan you can find on dvd and digital download right now uh you know that kind of stuff uh and also my buddy from texas Hey, uh, a commentator for the great uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling down there, Amen at Amen Two, please on the Twitter. Is how you doing this week, my friend? I am doing fantastic, Sorgatron. I'm ready. We came off last weekend's crazy uh, WrestleMania weekend uh, podcast where we talked about so much indie wrestling, but I, I, I'm I'm excited. I want to talk more indie wrestling. I'm I'm into it, Sorg. I'm I'm I'm, I'm in deep. Let's get at it. Yeah, we were, we're two weeks off from talking to anybody from your neck of the woods. I'm excited to see uh, what new faces you can introduce me to here. So who do you got on tap, sir? On tap for this week is a, a guy who, not a Texas native, but I have seen him a lot of work uh, in the Texas area. Uh, is more predominant in the St. Louis area where he uh, works for companies such as St. Louis Anarchy, a uh, former St. Louis Anarchy champion, uh, as well as a competitor for many other promotions uh, that I'm sure we'll be talking about with him, Mr. Evan Jalistico. Evan, how are you this evening? I am good. Actually, I have to get something upstairs. Hold on. Talk amongst yourself. I actually forgot I have this. It's what? not something really important, but I think it's fun. What? Let's do that. Okay. I, uh, okay. Absolutely. I guess we're going to fill a little bit here. Yeah, let's um... – yeah, so oh. excited. We wanted to, we were planning originally on having Evan on last week. Uh, obviously, we did a bit of rescheduling, uh, having uh, Doctor Fuelbed on. But uh, we, you know, it's oh. going to be oh. big. I'm excited. Hey. Oh, conveniently oh. enough. Got about this. Wait, hold on. There we go. No, okay. It's an important the, talking yeah, point for those on video. I believe that's the Anarchy I Championship Wrestling uh, right. title. Oh. So that was fun. I forgot I had that all together. <laughs> it was under it's like three gear bags. And you just reminded me uh, from Texas. So, yeah. Ah. Conveniently <laughs> enough, uh, I know you are the former Anarchy Heavyweight Champion. Uh, I, I believe some chicanery uh, has has uh, gotten you in possession of that championship belt. I never <laughs> lost her. I don't Maybe we'll talk about that a bit later. But yeah, uh, I guess the first thing we should talk about, uh, the thing we sort of introduce uh, the sh anyone who's on our show with, is th with the first question of how did you get into professional wrestling? May even starting back to what what you what is your first memory of professional wrestling? The thing that uh, first stuck in your mind uh, when it comes to watching pro wrestling? Um, I mean, uh, WrestleMania three. I was at my mom's wedding, escaped away as a small child, uh, and on the big screen. I don't remember if it was live or video replay, uh, but I had watched Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant as my first memory and how I became intoxicated with the parasite known as wrestling. I mean, I love it, but it kills me. Literally, it will kill me. Um, <laughs> I got into wrestling because they have a public access and a lot of shitty federations got public access because it's free, right? Why would you not want to put your 400-pound son on TV wrestling your best friend who's also in the 300-pound range uh, in jeans and whatever favorite band shirt they have 
for the title that looks like a license plate stapled onto a leather belt you found at Walmart. Why would you not want that? I mean, I mean come on. Right? That's just the epitome. <laughs> um, that sounded really negative, but it wasn't meant to be. It was more supposed to be funny. <laughs> that's a true situation. That, that's kind of what we found. And then I saw, do you want to be a pro wrestler? And yeah, clearly I do. So I called the number because um, I figured I could clearly be better than the two people I just watched, and I am. Just so we're, just so we're clear on that. <laughs> um, went to the bowling alley, met Jordan Lacey, bowled, and then started training. That's awesome. That's it, like that. Now, and, and we talked to uh, Gary J a few episodes back, and I know you obviously know Gary very well as a member of the submission squad. Uh, and, and was it that around the time, I believe, uh, I'm assuming you partnering with Jordan Lacey, I guess, in a sense, was sort of around the time of the LWA? Yes, it was the uh, beginning. Before there was the LWA, there was the XWA. Because, of course, uh, back then, what is it? would have been wrestling 10 years. Of course, in the early 2000s, uh, every extreme federation had to be spelled with an X, right? <laughs> so Extreme Wrestling Alliance. Uh, did Gary tell you that he was two characters on that show? Uh, extreme believe- Gary J. And Frankie the Flamer? I, I don't believe he went into Frankie the Flamer. There you go. There's a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he was two shows. He wrestled Pierre, who, oh, man, what was what was Pierre's name on that show? Oh, man, it's going to bug me. It was the Prodigy. It was the Prodigy. He came out in windbreaker pants, a uh, sleeveless jersey tee, if I remember correctly. I don't think he had a hat on. I want to say he did, but I don't think he did. And he came out to rap. And it's pretty good. Which, which and, if you know Pierre Abernathy. Yeah. And Pierre is, is pretty versed in the rap community. He knows his rap. Him and Chris Hero go back and forth on it a lot. Of um, most of them at Pierre, so I don't really know if that's true. But I uh, know. Um, so, yeah, he was a prodigy. I was Havoc, actually, H-A-V-O-K, because I couldn't spell with a C. That's far ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, come on, right? With all the yeah. with all the extreme wrestling federations, you can't just be yeah. you don't spell, spell it normally. Me. I mean, if I was smart, I would have thrown a Y in there or something. I don't know. And uh, <laughs> so I wrestled the match, um, won my first match, and then got destroyed by one of the guys who I originally thought I was better than, and still are. Uh, and then I would later make my triumphant return from a side. I got thrown out of the venue, out of the front door. Uh, I would then make my triumphant return from the side door for the battle royal because, of course, right? <laughs> and, um, the announcer, his name was Black Love Butch Fletcher, which, if I'm on again, I will get into more about that. But I don't want to. I don't want to spoil everything at once. Uh, and uh, he kept calling me Hav Ock, not Havoc. Not like H A V I C or I K, I guess, in my instance. Have Ock, like two words, like Doc Ock, but have mm-hmm. Ock. Uh, and it's just really funny. And uh, Pierre, or the Prodigy, let's call him the Prodigy, uh, was also doing commentary. He didn't participate in the Battle Royal, and he would actually pronounce my name right. And it's really funny. I think one of us still has the VHS tape of the show around. And uh, I shit you not. Um, I don't know what my language barrier is, so I'm just going to say it. Oh, uh, fine. Okay. Uh, we've, we've, heard, we've heard worse and seen worse on this show. Good, because I can get way worse. Don't worry. <laughs> I will top whatever you heard or seen. Um, <laughs> gorgeous Jordan Lacey at the time was triple X Jordan Lacey, of course, because extreme with an X. And <laughs> his tag partner was legit na- his legit name, his shoot indie quotation marks name was harry pickle that's his name his wrestling <laughs> name and i can say that because he's long retired or dead or some combination of the two Maybe he's in <laughs> right now i don't know um his his wrestler name was Hellraiser. So yeah, okay, maybe he is. Uh, you know, he's it's surprisingly kind of surprising that he didn't go with Harry Pickle. It's, yeah, uh, because it's kind of like he, a Ri- uh, Richard Blood, uh, Ric Flair situation, right? You know, Ricky Steamboat. Excuse me. Yeah, and uh, he and Lacey were a part of a stable with our friend Doug Murray, who had broken his ankle earlier in the day trying to do an insiguri 
off the ring truck uh, because, of course, and um, they were going to be a part of the stable called Explicit Material, three X's. I don't even remember if there was any. I think it was just XXX plus P-L-I-C-I-T material. And I'm sure there was an X in material somewhere, too. I'm just waving my hand. Are they going to see this? Because I'm just doing this for my oh, Absolutely. Own. Very visual, video audio is our, is our audience. So. Because okay. I, I don't know what to do with my hands sometimes. A lot of the time. I'm just... Ah. <laughs> but no, uh, so that was, I guess that was sort of your start in a sense. Uh, and... and I'm assuming eventually during that time you did transform in a sense into Evangelistico. How did that come about? Okay, so from XWA there was one show and then done, one and done. From XWA then uh, Lacey, who was actually in charge, the booker, promoter, whatever, uh, was like, yeah, I can't do this. I just must try to be a wrestler. So from there, um, LWA was formed and – it was governed by a couple of different people and it's kind of rotated for a bit. Um, but we all got changes. We all changed just a little bit. Gary found a more animalistic side of himself with uh, Gary the barn owl. Pierre embraced the prodigy. I'm just going to call him that the whole interview. So if people tune in midway like, who the fuck is this prodigy guy? Ah, <laughs> find it. The prodigy embraced more of his European heritage. And uh, I found God. And... Uh, <laughs> I changed my name to uh, from Have Ock to Evangelist, and uh, just decided to preach the good word in between matches. From there, I don't even know if you can still find the video. I wonder if I can. I'm gonna try. I don't know if you'll see my screen, but I'm gonna try and find the video. Uh, from there, hold on. Uh, hold on. Kelly is has sent me a Facebook shitting all over you in the chat room of my name on show. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Yes, you he is. Mention it, but uh, other friend of the Indie Mayhem show, Kelly Kyle, is here, and he has some not so nice things to say about him. Just to think about. Right. Most of them are probably true. Okay, so I'm going to try and find something while I talk to you. But uh, I, my name was Evangelist, Evangelist, and I uh, tried to preach God. Didn't always work. In fact, I can tell you it never really worked. But uh, one day, God spoke to me, and he told me to stop being such a sissy, or I can't remember. Uh, and I changed my ways. And I added Ico to the end of my name because it made sense. And I have moved on ever since. Let's see. Interesting. So, so has any uh, – would you say in that character has definitely carried on into your, fut uh, your future in professional wrestling past that point? Oh, yeah. Definitely still a man of God. Um, yeah. Man, but uh, yeah. yeah, and, and uh, obviously you were uh, big in St. Louis, uh, doing a lot of stuff down there. Uh, obviously, I know you from your work in Texas, uh, specifically with uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Uh, I know you uh, being a big part of that. Uh, and we talked to Gary uh, in the past about um, sort of the travel in a sense, and, and uh, that's definitely one of the topics we talk about a lot on, on the Indie Mayhem show with wrestlers. Um, how do you feel like in the sense that that travel is gone? Because I believe it's 14 hours from St. Louis to Texas. Um, what sort of conveys, you know, you guys sort of put in those hours and do the, the, those kind of drives? Uh, the love of wrestling is the easiest answer. And then thankfully the money we get for gas is the physical answer. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, honestly, uh, Pierre tells the better, uh, the prodigy tells the better story. Uh, <laughs> about how he kind of got started. Like he and Gary started in Texas and then I eventually assimilated down uh, from there. Vega joined and uh, people have come up, but uh, really yeah, it's just ACW gave us a chance when no one else did. And I thank Darren for that. Um, and then from then I took over his company and uh, took his belt. Yeah. Pretty much kind of uh, overcome it in a sense. Um, and, and, that's another thing I wanted to mention you about because I've seen you through ACW. Um, and I know originally, obviously, the, some of the stuff you did with the Submission Squad uh, in the beginning was a bit more, I, I would say, comedic in a sense. You guys still definitely had a serious edge to you, but uh, you, you were definitely uh, one to uh, uh, dish out some funny lines and stuff like that. And then in your path, I guess, to sort of take down ACW, you went sort of to a more serious side, uh, a bit more different side, I guess you could say, of Evangelistico. Um, yes. I, I actually wanted to ask you about that. Like, what, do you prefer one or the other? Do you, do you 
like sort of doing because I know you still do both in other companies, but um, do you have a sort of a preference when it comes to your character in this in that sense? The realist in me tells you whichever pays more. Sorry. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't know if you can tell, but I am kind of a funny guy. Like, aha, right? Uh, I do enjoy <laughs> having a little bit of humor in me, but um, you know, what is what is the Jim Cornette quote that uh, funny doesn't equate money? Yeah. Um, and I find that to be not always true, but a lot of the way true. Um, so I kind of uh, incorporate the funniness when I can. And, you know, obviously I'm not such a great guy all the time. So I don't want people to laugh along with me. Uh, I want them, I want to, you know, I laugh at them. Um, mm -hmm. In IWA, it's kind of Mid-South, um, which is a groovy place, by the way. Defend IWA, hashtag, whatever. I like it. Ian Rock always treated me good. Even before he went away, uh, we actually wrestled for him a couple of times in tag matches against uh, a couple of different teams. And Ian was always good to us, always nice, always honest. So I, I've never had a problem with Ian Rock, just in case. Just should the odd topic of IWA Mid South come up later for no real reason. Might possibly. Yeah. But. Um, the but in a sense, I guess the way the way I, at least I get this from what you're saying is that maybe in the the fact that you can do both the comedic stuff and the more serious stuff all gives you in a sense more opportunity in a sense to where you could you know you see you can be seen as more viable for a company. Yes, I would but agree yeah. with most of that. Yeah, and and, and I think in a sense. I, and you mentioned the whole like money sense, but I think it it definitely is something that I think a lot of indie wrestlers should take into account is that you know you want to get as much booking as you can and and sort of get around as as much as possible, you know. Yeah. Um, I actually had a a, a fun question I did want to ask you about the character that you were doing in ACW, however. Um, a lot of the inspiration, uh, in a sense, and, and I know one of the moves you implemented. Uh, in your transformation of that was uh, sort of a mandible claw in a sense. And I, and I noticed that you have a uh, sort of a hand, a gl I guess some sort of glove in a sense that is very uh, uh, similar to the original uh, uh, Mankind, if anyone's seen it, sort of the one f the finger covered uh, uh, glove. I was just curious in a sense of where do you find something like that? Do you, is, there a, is there a store that you can get that? Do you have it personally made? Um, I was always curious. I had it personally made for me, actually. Um, it's also in camo, you know, this, uh, for Pistol Danger, the soldier. Because um, the war, right? Uh, it was personally made for me by a good friend. And he still sometimes does gear, but he's kind of not so much anymore. Um, there's long and short. Otherwise, I prefer tape because it's clean. I, don't, I might forget to mm. put that in the wash. Not a lot of guys want dirty things down their throat. Sometimes they don't have a choice, obviously, as it goes down there. But, uh, you know, I like to be sanitary. Absolutely. I'm big, big, big proponent of the sanitariness is Evangelistico. Um, another thing we want to talk to you about, and I think uh, in Alex Carr's email, he said we'll get more into that topic for this company. But uh, obviously one of the things that you've done this year – uh, and as well as uh, the whole submission squad, brother, in a sense, it's really, I think, gotten you uh, in front of more people and in front of more eyes uh, has been uh, your run in Chikara and, and, and your sort of resurgence is, as, as we saw at National Pro Wrestling, National Pro Wrestling Day, uh, standing up for Chikara in a sense. If, if many people don't know the story, I know you four, uh, Evan, uh, Gary, Davey Vega, and Pierre Abernathy, uh, the prodigy um, had a big tag match with King of Trios one year that got interesting reviews and 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 sort of revered in a sense. Um, and you guys sort of came back with a mission to uh, to uh, unseat Chikara. Um, uh, how was that whole experience uh, getting to do uh, first, like the uh, the all the famous, I guess, Submission Squad videos and stuff like that, leading to what happened at National Pro Wrestling Day? Uh, it was pretty great um i'm not gonna lie the hold on video that i'm looking at super bad because originally <laughs> we tried to sing like the whole song not just what you saw in the beginning not the don't you know things should change things will go your way like we sang the whole song myself pierre and veg we're not singers <laughs> um there is audio dub of just us 
screeching through that song. Uh, also, it's a terrible song. Let's be honest. It is. It is the wordiest really? song. Really, I, I I would contend you on that actually. I uh, it may not be the worst song ever, but it's the I, I will I will argue it is the most unnecessarily wordy song uh, that I know or have ever sung on a video where I'm dressed as a GI Joe esque man. I will I will give you its wordiness. I will say that much. I I, I personally enjoy it. I uh, there was a tear shed when I when I saw you guys performing it. Um, but yeah, how, and definitely, obviously, the aspects of your characters were sort of brought to the forefront in the stuff you're doing now with that version of the Submission Squad. Obviously, the Pistol Danger stuff, and then even like Brainwave Davy Vega and stuff like that. Um, do you guys how how much fun I think are are you having doing that character? Um, uh, now. A blast. Like you said, we had the tag match. It got terrible reviews. Uh, going back and watching it, it wasn't great. Like, it was, like, we, I think, we had just followed uh, the four-way between... With uh, Kota Ibushi. Ibushi, Generico, Nick Jackson, or Matt Jackson. I can't remember. And then we went on holy fuck, we're not going to follow that, right? Yeah, I, I, I will say to you guys' is, uh, contention, I don't see anything following. I believe that got, like, match of the year for, like, a couple years at that point for Chikara. Uh, yeah. Um, so we put on what I will claim is not the worst match ever in Chikara history, because I'm, ah, uh, but uh, certainly not the best match to follow that four-way. Mm. Uh, I would say out of context, that match is... Solid. Uh, yeah, I would say that. The Vega actually went on almost suicide watch because it, it almost killed him. Just negative review after negative review. And like people would contact us and be like, you fucking suck. Quit wrestling and die. And uh, Vega took, him, took it hard. And uh, the rest of us were like, well, uh, thanks for the support. Don't think I'm going to die. But if you want to eat that <laughs> feel free and and now i mean you sort of used it in a sense as motivation and and personally i haven't seen the match but i know from your work i saw in in texas and and in the stuff that you guys have developed uh you've if the match at king of trios 2009 was indication of anything and it's you guys have gotten them exponentially you know great i i i really do think all four i mean you submission squad guys really have put on some really amazing stuff as of late. Um, but yeah, and yeah, you used, I mean, almost using the, that, those negative reviews and, and that backlash from that match as contention for your comeback. And now the Chikara fans have sort of warmed to you in a sense, um, seeing obviously through these videos. Yeah. Uh, the Chikara army is actually, the Chikara army is actually really cool. Um, there's some that still hate us and that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion of wrestling. I'm not going to mm. fight somebody over an opinion. Um, but, uh, although I will, <laughs> I was going to say, unless it's in the wrestling ring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, they're really cool. They really accept us. A lot of people put really positive reviews about it. And then, you know, every now and then some naysayers will rear their head and you know, they'll be like, Oh, they still suck. And then, you know, people will be like, no, no, they really don't. Uh, it actually, it was a little bit more than just coming back to Chikara because actually that match was so bad that it got our name out there. And as there is a saying, there's no bad press, we actually got a considerable amount of bookings based off the negative press from Chikara because a lot mm. of promoters wanted to see. I'm just looking at my, like, three-second delay, and I use a <laughs> lot of hand motions. I'm doing it right now. Um, but uh, so a lot of promotions booked us based to see if we were really that bad. Thankfully, we weren't. And a lot of people, uh, Absolute Intense Wrestling included, uh, booked us and then really liked us and uh, they used us a lot and uh, lately we went 10 and 0 in uh, AI dub for John Thorne and Chandler Briggins two awesome dudes yeah that place, <laughs> that place. Uh, and if anybody's in the Cleveland Ohio surrounding area they should obviously go check them out because they're a product worth watching and I really have a great time there it's a great atmosphere great wrestling and um, great set, just 100% great set. 
Yeah, and if anyone wants to see, uh, obviously, you've added a submission squad member in your AIW battles with uh, one Briley Pierce, uh, former WWE developmental talent. And, and I, from what I can tell, he's fit in very well with you, uh, you three. Oh, yeah. Briley uh, is great. Uh, we can get to the people that I super enjoy later, but I'll just say this about Briley. Great. He's hot. He's young. He's Briley. What else do you need? Absolutely. In fact, he is indeed hot young Briley. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, I guess the other question I do want to talk to you about, and it's a question that we're sort of making a regular question here on the show. Obviously, we talk indie wrestling. We want to sort of discuss the aspect that comes to indie wrestling. And a common question that we do ask, uh, and, I, and I want to pose to you, uh, what, if you could think of one, what is the greatest thing about independent wrestling and what is in turn the worst thing about independent wrestling? The greatest thing about independent wrestling is the variety. The worst thing is the politics. Hmm. I don't know how many people have said that or mentioned it, but indie wrestling sometimes can be a lot like high school where there's a lot of clicks and uh, it's just really hard to get anywhere unless you know someone, you know someone, you know someone. Um, I'm always told there's three things in wrestling that matter. There's the skill, there's the X factor and there's the look. Mm. But in reality, it's the third thing that matters most. It's the look. I don't know why I chose to go with the ring thing. I should have just done it. It's the third thing. Uh, it's the look, really. And uh, I don't know how many of these people see me, uh, but I am not in the shape of a Greek Adonis. I have a little mm -hmm. bit of weight on me. Um, I look a little deranged from time to time. And uh, not a lot of people think that that's worth anything. They look at somebody like me and, well, you know, because he's not built like this. They see my body of work and they're like, well, maybe. And um, that's the worst. Yeah, there I am in X-Men colors and shirt and clothes and a belt. I believe that's the LWA old, old belt. Um, and, uh, you know, at the time I'm also wearing a rock elbow pad. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, <laughs> but uh, politics is the worst. And uh, if anybody knows me, I don't like to stay negative. But the best is variety. Hmm. Because there's so many awesome things about pro wrestling. And we'll just stick with the wrestlers for right now. Um, there's so many great wrestlers everywhere. Men, women, transgendered. Um, like, there's obviously there's me and Rachel Summerlin, and uh, she was an amazing wrestler. Uh, I'm sorry to see her go, but I couldn't be more happier for her. Uh, she has a kid now. She's happy outside of wrestling, and that's something not a lot of people are able to accomplish. And so I'm happy for her for that. Um, let's see, Athena. We've already started a discussion on her. She is amazing. Um, We'll go. We'll name. Uh, we'll name a couple Texas people that I really think are great. Yeah, and she's incredible. Yeah, let's see. Uh, there's actually a really funny shot Kelly Kyle has, and I don't even know if she knows this. She she has to. Is there's a great shot of I gotta remember which one. Jerry Sags. Fuck the nasty boys. That's the first thing <laughs> to say. Jerry Sags at. Um, she's leaving, and there's literally the head turn. Like just checking out her ass, and Kelly Kyle <laughs> snapped it perfectly in time. I have seen that photo actually. Uh, fun fact: you know, tune into Indie Mayhem Show episode two, where we interviewed Kelly Kyle, and he told us about his nasty boy story, and it's pretty amazing. Uh, I obviously have nasty boys, but we can get to that later. We can get to yeah. the second, thing, third interview, whatever. Um, so from Texas, we have Athena. Uh, everybody's touts Matthew Palmer, and that's fair. He's amazing. So. We'll skip over him. We'll go to my young boy, Thomas Shire. Uh, Thomas, Thomas Shire. Uh, Thomas Shire is probably one of the best pound for pound wrestlers I know, just because the way he's trained. And I would, I wish he moved up to St. Louis. He could wrestle St. Louis Anarchy all the time. Um, mm. But he doesn't. And he wrestles a lot in Texas for ACW, Inspire. Uh, he just went into RCW, which is a great place. I'll talk about them later, too. Remind me. Uh, he's worked really. for TCW and Mr. B, um, but more people should book Thomas Shire because he's great. 
He's got a um, what's a good way? Of, he's got like this natural charisma about him that when mm-hmm. he's having fun, you just have fun. Like, and I love that. Like, um, I, I can definitely attest. Like, the way he is sort of outside the ring and inside the ring is almost one and the same. Yeah, he's just got this like quiet charisma. That's a weird way of saying it, but a true way of saying it. Like, um, let's see. So we've got Athena, but everybody will know about her. It's Shammer. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Thomas Shire, let's go. Hmm, somebody else I enjoy that probably doesn't get enough publicity. I'd say Jojo Bravo, but he's moved up to St. Louis, so we'll do him in the St. Louis section. Hmm. Baby Boy Barrett Brown from Brown Town is great. <laughs> and upcoming, uh, upcoming. I say that like he's fucking 10. Upcoming. He's a great wrestler. Hey, he's, and, uh, he's, he is fairly young. It, it amazes me Barrett's actually younger than me, and if anyone knows me, that's saying something. But, the, oh, yeah, yeah, the things he can do are amazing. No. Uh, Carson, Carson and Barbie, the combo, um, mm-hmm. they're great. Um, really, ACW has just a pretty, honest-to-God, solid roster. There are a couple additions it could make, um, but, I mean, even if they didn't, it's still a great roster. It's still great people. It's still great wrestlers. Still great wrestling. Still great storytelling. Hmm. So those are the three, right? Actually, there was way more than that. I think there was five. So <laughs> whatever. And I guess uh, I know you also wanted to name five from uh, St. Louis. I guess any any talents up there that you think we should be knowing about? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, Jojo Bravo is number one. Uh, I think highly. I think the world of uh, both because we're huge kaiju fans and. Uh, because we just enjoy the sh- shit out of stuff. Um, I don't know if I just want to do St. Louis. Dan Walsh is great. He doesn't take that many bookings. And people like will get down on him for being from MTV, but fuck them, because he's a great guy and, great, and he's a great wrestler. Um, hey, we're for one guy. Let's just say those two for St. Louis area. There's a, there's a plethora. Like Gary mm-hmm. Jay and Davey Vega are from St. Louis. And honestly, they're the best two members of the squad. Um Pierre Abernathy being after that because he can absolutely out wrestle anybody. The fact that people uh, haven't been able to see that yet is a shame because he doesn't wrestle in St. Louis Anarchy because he's so busy running the whole fucking thing. Um, and then there's me. Uh, one more guy from St. Louis. Let me think. So many people have their fingers crossed probably right now. Oh, please mention me. I doubt. Uh, Alex, the big Al. Alex Rudolph, the, the, the Viking, the American Viking. I'll go with uh, someone uh, kind of still breaking in. Amazing. Uh, he's getting better and better every time I see him. Absolutely. Better shape, better hair. Just always so fucking amazing, amazing. hair. Yeah, amazing, right? <laughs> um, and there's other people uh, from St. Louis, but I'll just try and keep it limited to JoJo because he just moved up here. Um, Dan Walsh because he's my friend and I like him a lot. Uh, and uh, Alex, because he's young enough to come. Uh, obviously, I could say the hooligans and others. Um, so let's kind of scour the globe, just or the states, just a little bit of people I really enjoy. Uh, I can't not mention Ricky Shane Page and uh, Eric Ryan. And I don't mm-hmm. know why. I just love the shit out of them, both personally and in ring. I find them just fucking phenomenally talented. Like, I wish so much more for them. Um, I wish that there was space in St. Louis Anarchy's roster for them. They would be on every show. But they have a pretty stacked roster, which is a good segue into the St. Louis Anarchy plug. Yeah, not, conveniently not, enough. Yeah. Um, also, uh, recently I've just started wrestling Team IOU and IWA Mid-South, mm-hmm. and they're a great tag team, and I really enjoy wrestling them. Uh, I, I enjoy IWA once, Mid-South. Uh, last month in uh, Texas. They're, de- they're really fun. Yeah. Um, I enjoy that their shirt is Adventure Time because I love Adventure Time. Uh, <laughs> I'm an adult, of course. And let's see. Let's see. I got Ricky Shane Page out, Eric Ryan out, Team IOU. One more. Let's make it a Joshi. Heidi Lovelace. I like her. No, you, uh, her, but because she's my friend, I'll say Angela Slime because I think she's great in the ring. And uh, she's my friend outside the ring, and sometimes she helps us fix my hair when my hair gets too long. I, I've got it cut short, but uh, for a while I had it pretty shaggy. Uh, so those will be my five just out and abouts. 
awesome. Definitely, I agree with all those. Uh, definitely, if anyone's listening, check out those guys because they're they're really ones I think that can break out. Uh, but since you did segue into it, it's conveniently I do want, I do want to bring up uh, the company that you work for a lot and and are most known for I guess would be St. Louis Anarchy. And you guys have a stacked event coming up, conveniently called hashtag Stacked. Um, which looks like a very great show. Um, I, I am psyched from it from top to bottom. Uh, Gary J is defending his title against uh, Takaki Wanabe from New Japan, uh, which should be super fun. Uh, Chris Hero against Davey Vega, which is going to be a killer match. Um, I, I, when the DVD for that comes out, you and if you're not going to the show, like check it out because that is undoubtedly going to be amazing. Um, and then ACH against Alex Shelley. Tons of great stuff. Uh, how excited are you for this event coming up? I, I'm way like way past excited. Just the, the three matches you named, and then JoJo Bravo and Danny Cannon, Kylo. Which is, I, I, I'm excited about the, like all even the lower card stuff. Like, the potential matchups I think are going to be really cool. I like the Lethal Lottery because I just like the, the craziness of anything can happen in it. Um, I'm beyond excited because. Like, St. Louis Anarchy is kind of, like, the secret of the Midwest, and I hate that. I wish just more people mm. knew. It's so fucking great. Like, <laughs> I just love the shit out of it. I love wrestling for them, obviously, because I do. Uh, they, there's just, like, an influx of talent that you're not going to see uh, used in certain ways or really any, as that way. Like, nowhere else will you see Davey Vega versus Chris Hero because no one puts stock into Davey Vega because, again, they look at him. And while Vega has gotten in tremendous shape, like he doesn't have a like a sizzling six pack, he doesn't have you know pecs out to his fucking bicep like he, he was drawn by Rob Lithfield, Lithfield, Litchfield, which, whatever. Everybody knows the Captain America drawing. I'm talking about. We're Captain America <laughs> just after there, right? Um, but they should because Davey Vega is absolutely fantastic in every way. The only place that I can say other than the Anarchies is uh, AIW again. Uh, actually, I think Vega has a singles match coming up at AIW, and it's more than due. I can actually look it up. I believe but, it's uh, Bobby Beverly. Yes, Booby Beverly. I love Booby Beverly. He would have made it on my list, but he didn't because I only had five. I love Booby Beverly. <laughs> That's good. We can leave him off. <laughs> okay. Um, my little brother versus Alex Shelley. I'm. Uh, I'm. I. I just wanted. To, I just want to watch it like right now. I, I just wish that I had the space balls ability to put in the tape, fast forward to the match and watch it, even though it hasn't already happened yet. And um, that's what I want. Space balls reference. There will probably be more. <laughs> I just I didn't want you to know that. Um, I like to leave the letters. Kyle O'Reilly versus Jonathan Gresham also, honestly, might be the best match on the card just because how good Jonathan Gresham is and just how – Fucking fantastic Kyle O'Reilly is. Like, he's just starting to get a lot of press recently, but, like, we've always felt that he was fucking awesome. Like, mm. Kyle's pretty much the man. Like, man, he can do anything. But, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, that's a St. Louis Anarchy's hashtag stacked. Uh, I believe you can uh, follow them, SLA Wrestling, on Facebook. Uh, uh, St. Louis, I believe it's slawrestling.com, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and go check that out if you're in the uh, uh, Illinois area. Go support them because I agree wholeheartedly with Evan that uh, they're definitely the best kept secret in uh, in uh, the Midwest. Uh, really amazing stuff coming out of St. Louis Anarchy. Um, yeah, thank you, Evan. Uh, I, we're going to talk some indie news, and you're uh, free to join us, free to. Uh, join in on the conversation and 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 in on the discussion uh, with some of the indie stuff that's happening. Um, some of this what? may pertain to you, but uh, yeah, uh, there's a couple. I know, I know, Sorg, you had an event, I believe, this past weekend that you were a part of. I did, I did. I, I, I'm sorry, Evan. Did you have something you wanted to say there? Oh, I just had a couple more plugs, mostly. For oh, Shambles. absolutely. Do it. It's facebookcom slash St. Louis Anarchy, all spelled out. Uh, the Twitter is at STL Anarchy, if I'm not mistaken. I probably am. I'm terrible at that one. And um, May 2nd, 
You can order tickets online, and the DVD for uh, Double Shot Night 1 and 2 should be available soon. The awesome people at Smart Mark Video are helping us out a lot, and they've done it. And uh, it should be to us very soon. Order that. Uh, young One of the Young Bucks, uh, because Matt broke his hand, is on there. Night 1, he teams with Johnny Gargano against Matt Fitch and Davey Vega, and that match is fucking awesome. There should be a nice. teaser for it somewhere online. I'm not 100%, but I'm 100%. I believe it's on, if you go to Smart Mark Video's YouTube channel, that's where I believe the teaser's at. Um, yeah. But yeah, if it's anything from the teaser, that match is something any, everyone needs to check out. It is. And Gary wrestles uh, Roderick Strong that long, and that's just fucking great. Uh, and then night two is Albert and Nick Jackson versus the Hooligans. And uh, if you haven't seen the Hooligans, you need to. They are just they're two big bruisers that I absolutely loved. Um, that's why I said bruisers the way I did. <laughs> it's an indie news that I will chime in on because I have opinions on everything. And awesome, three. awesome, awesome. And I think we'll have a question here that I definitely want to get your uh, opinion on from a fan. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, yeah like I said, I, I did uh, uh, I did have a show this past weekend, uh, the great uh, IWC Night of Superstars 3 up in Meadville, PA, which is kind of cool because it's kind of in my old backyard before I moved down here to Pittsburgh. Um, biggest crowd, I, they say, in the IWC history. I got a little bit of footage I, I saw here. the photo of it. it yeah, I got massive. a little bit of the footage. This is the first anybody seeing this, actually, if you're on video here. There's, there's a bit of the crowd there. Um, they said over 1,200. Amazing. And I know talking to AJ Styles later tonight, he said the number he heard was 1,300. Uh, so I, and there's a little bit of pan over the entrance. Yeah, it was a packed crowd. These shows usually do very good. Um, and, and this did even better, uh, than, than I've ever seen. Cause I used to do the Night of Legends shows. And of course now there's Night of Superstar shows here in Meadville. Um, it's, it's pretty nice. Of course, the big headline, the big name headlines for the night, uh, probably the biggest of them was, uh, Bret Hart coming out, uh, with, uh, uh, you know, Davey, uh, I'm sorry, uh, David Hartsmith. I keep for, I keep confusing the names since he keeps mixing them up. Um, I know. He, well, I know he goes by Davey Boy Smith Jr. in Japan. So. Yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting what he was billed at uh, on the show. Kind of cool, and, and leaving kind of the big feel to it. The Delaney's, I, I believe they're based out of Cleveland. I've seen them. I think you've seen them. I know you're wearing the shirt from Wrestle. Uh, resolution there, Eamon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they played, like, a little bit beforehand. They actually played out uh, Davey Boy Smith Jr. Um, uh, to this match. Uh, so so that, that was the first time we've had a live band, I think, interaction with IWC. Um, and I think it played off really well. Uh, of course, Dave Boy had a, had a really good match with RJ City. He was currently the Super Indy uh, uh, champion over there. Uh, uh, top to bottom, a really fun show. Um, uh, you got to see the Steiner brothers. I got to see the jealous. Steiner brothers. I can't say that I was looking forward to it or was terribly impressed by it. Um, <laughs> but it was still cool to see, hey, there's the Steiner brothers. I know it was going around that uh, Scott was a bit of a diva and went and signed the uh, auction items for the evening. Uh, so that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth for that whole situation. But no, I didn't interact. He's Scott with... Steiner. He does He's what he Scott wants. Steiner. He does whatever the hell he wants to. Uh, of course, taking on John McChesney and his uh, Team Big League guys, which were always Evan, fun. I believe, I believe Evan has something to say. What's that? I oh, see no, does he? see him motioning. What's that, Evan? Did Rick try and sell you on any real estate? No, he didn't. We were talking about that. And and, 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 and uh, one of the videographers was with us, uh, Chachi, he kept saying, it's like, you know that like like Rick is only there because like like Mama Snyder told Scott he can't go without him. <laughs> you know? Uh, so, and of course the, the highlight, really the highlight for me, and I'm so pissed. So many people left early. Of course the show ran, started an hour late because of the Bret Hart line and everything. A great match between AJ Styles and Anthony Neist. I, I believe this is the first time ever for these two. Um, like in the footage you're seeing a, a headlock move. I was, I don't remember the last time I've been so invested in a headlock sequence. <laughs> And we're just, and even like afterwards, like the whole ride home, like, like, you know, Chachi was in there with us and, 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 and Eamon, you know, Chachi, he's the one that was the curmudgeon of the wrestling mayhem show for the longest time. He's sitting there the whole time going, that crowd didn't deserve to see that match. Like, <laughs> as in like, you know, how many of them left and were there for Bret Hart, stuff like that. And probably yeah. didn't appreciate a good 
holy crap, good wrestling match uh, between these guys. Uh, they put in probably a, a, a good 20 minute classic on that. It was definitely, that's the highlight of my year so far, as far as wrestling goes. Um, but no, it was really good. Uh, yeah, you know, Eamon, we've been talking, I've been kind of down on uh, working with some of these guys uh, uh, locally, had a couple rough shows there. And, and this is just like reminded me of why I do this stuff. Um, yeah. Like, there's just like, like so many moments and so many, and I know some other people were going into the show and having a tough time related to, you know, whether personal life or pro wrestling and everything, um, and just came out of it just with such a good feeling uh, um, after after an awesome show like this. And it was all for, it was all for a good cause because the entire show, of course, was for uh, Meadful High School up there. Um, helping um, I, it's the, some of the clubs up there. I, I know it's. I think it might be different every year they go up there. Um, but but really really cool. I and mean, going off that, of course, we talked with Doctor Feelbad last week about the salute the troops um, that's coming up this Sunday or Saturday. I'm sorry at, at California University, and uh, uh, very excited about that. Also for a good cause. I know they have actually met uh, even more so since we talked to him a week ago on this show. Um, they're obligations for the donations for the uh, 9-11 memorial uh, mm. and they're still pursuing more sponsors to help put into that fund um, uh, participated in their uh, uh, press conference they did last Thursday down there at Cal U uh, I'm really excited to see how that's going to go uh, Chachi actually edited a video that you know helped edit a video for uh, the, the big feud going into that that's going to be played on the big screen you know uh, to be in a big venue like that you know I, I don't think they're going to get 6,000 people in there but I think they're going to get significant enough for you know let's say for indie wrestling you know I, yeah. I i could see maybe as many people going in there with as much uh uh you know they're getting out about this event as maybe we saw up there in meadville i would hope you know i think it would be mm. fantastic for for the company for the for the cause that they're doing down there uh just in general to see that they could pull that in and they're not and they don't have an aj styles on their on their show they don't have a uh, you know bright heart or anything like that um but there's a different kind of buzz going into it uh and i want to see kind of comparatively see how that show does uh to what i just witnessed up in uh, meadville over the past weekend so um so yeah really good this the april's shaping up to be a really crazy really good month for indie wrestling in the area and, and it's really good to see so um awesome and, and of course the dvd uh i think i want to finish editing tomorrow there uh, and that'll be up digital download by by the end of the week over at sorgatronmedia.com um and the dvds and all that stuff too so and i'll get all your pre-orders and post orders out by the end of the week too guys that i saw mm -hmm. in the so awesome uh so amen you know we got an email we did get an email. Thank you, uh, people, for emailing good times at wrestling uh, Email us about anything indie wrestling that, we, that you want us to talk about or discuss. Uh, definitely do that. Um, but it's from our good friend Alex Cars, who's got a birthday today. Hi, Alex. Happy birthday. Um, I got balloons for you over here. Happy birthday, <laughs> I got balloons for you that completely weren't here last week, too. I got a knife. I don't know. I was cleaning my nails with it. It's a birthday so. knife. It's a birthday <laughs> knife. Yeah. Commemorative birthday knife. Commemorative I birthday love it. knife. <laughs> uh, but he poses a discussion sort of question to us. Uh, he says that in, in his interview with Cole Cabana on Art of Wrestling, Mike Quackenbush spoke of pro wrestling as being, quote, a performance art, and that got me thinking. I've seen the, quote, small-time wrestling we love as either being indie wrestling or indie wrestling, uh, spelled out with an I. Uh, with the difference being whether you see it as a, some, more of a sport or an art form. What do you guys think? Do you see it more of one or the other? Do you see a bit of both? What spelling of indie indie do you feel more comfortable typing when writing about it on the internet? Uh, good question because any if you ask any – I know if you ask any sort of person, I guess, in the business as they say, uh, apparently it's indie with an IE because – in the indie with a Y is like Indianapolis. Funny enough, we named the show Indie Mayhem Show with a Y, and we're not changing it. Sorry. Uh <laughs> nope. Already made the graphic. Sorry about that. Nope. Sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, I, I love to know with both of you guys things sort of on this topic of whether you see – and it's a topic I guess a lot of comes with wrestling in general, but whether you see it more as a, a sport or an art. Oh, I guess I, I think even like, you know, I, I've talked to you before about on here about like kind of the different philosophies about how some of these shows come together here. And, and we, I don't know. I, I don't know if you can just throw it all as a art. I don't know. That yeah. seems a little broad. I, I think, I think there's some Indies that don't consider themselves an art. 
to a point. They're just like, we're just putting together some matches. You know, I mean, at least that's the attitude that gets conveyed. Then you get guys, guys like Jakar and everything, and, and they're doing something a little more interesting. It definitely fits more of those aspects. A uh, live-action comic book? So I guess mine would be kind of both. I don't know. Um, I don't see it as performance art because really there's no risk other than mm. just general unacceptance of the performance um, to performance art. Like I've never seen a street mime in theory get punched so hard that it knocks him out unless it's by somebody who just really fucking hates street mimes. <laughs> <laughs> Like that uh, Andy Samberg video, Punched Before Eating. Ah, that's hilarious. Um, so it's a combination of both. It's a, it's a risk-reward system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you perform, you're basically putting yourself out there, but you're also not only just putting out your creativeness, you're putting, you're putting your body on the line. You're putting your money where your mouth is. I think my performance is so good, I will risk life and limb for it. And you mm -hmm. really are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I would definitely, I definitely agree with that. Um, I, I always lean, in a sense, I, I agree. It, there, it's definitely both, but I lean a bit more to art in a sense, in the sense that, in, and it differs by companies, obviously, on on an indie level. But I know some, I, like kind of like what Sword was going about, like how some companies are like, we have these matches, and it's sort of a sense of letting the ring work dictate and and um you you were good based off of you did a good job based off of how good of a match you had mm -hmm. and then i know companies like chikara that are doing more story stuff because they want to, sp to get a specific message across or, or to evoke a certain emotion um based off of a story so i could see it going both ways um but yeah, I definitely I, I lean slightly more towards art, but obviously um, there's the physicality involved, and 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 like I like Evan mentioned, like it's putting your body out there for you know that art form. So I you know so more I'm thinking about this is uh, I'm looking at the part of his question that was more of a sport or an art form. Um, so we're talking about something that's physical, something that you do are putting your body in the line. And I, I look at, well, you know, we were talking earlier before about the acceptance of pro wrestling and how some of the local radio DJs were, um, you know, really kind of bashing on it. Eamon, I know you were very involved in the chat room on that. And yeah. uh, and I got to think about, like, you know, what, you know, one thing I was saying is, like, well, this is a performance and it's a story that's being told out, but the stage is in a ring in front of, you know, in, or you were talking about WWE, 20,000 people or whatever. Um, but it's still a very, very physical stage performance. In the long run, like is is that is that fair to say? You think? I, I would test that. I don't know, um, I, Evan. I, I obviously would know more of that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, Evan, it would be, yeah. <laughs> Evan, what are your thoughts on that kind of thought? What? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I, like I, I really kind of, like like it's it. I I wouldn't consider it so much of the sport. It's not you know. It's more. I, I look at pro wrestling as it's like a stage performance in a ring. Just a very, very physical stage performance. If I were to take it another level, like what would you consider that versus like say uh, another quasi similar thing would be like a, a, a circus where you have a trapeze artist and they're doing something physical, but it's an art form and it's a performance. Hmm. Uh, two things first. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I this earlier, good use of the word curmudgeon. It's not used enough. I personally enjoy that word, so I was very happy <laughs> to hear it. Uh, an amazing Spider-Man poster in the background, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I have to disagree. I, I think wrestling is a sport. Okay. In a way. Um, sure, there's a lot of pageantry to it, but I don't think of the nicest way I can put this is I think it's a lot more of a sport than some of the sports we have, like baseball. Um, I mean, really, what is it? It's a strength competition and then a running competition. You hit the ball as hard as you can, and then you run as fast as you can. Uh, and then on the defensive side, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a game of catch. Um, I mean, does mm -hmm. that really necess necessitate more of a sport? than two people going out there and putting their bodies on the line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Um, football, hockey, they're obviously more physical. Soccer can be more physical. Um, or football proper, as it were, can be more physical when need be. But generally, it's a sport about skill. And that's kind of what all sports are about, skill. Would you agree? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And wrestling is very much a sport about skill. Okay. And that's kind of how I look at it. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I think, I, 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 I think people, it, it's all, all in the definition of sport. Cause I think when people do the whole like sport to art comparison, they automatically think sport in the sense that, you know, it's a competition in the sense that anything can happen. Uh, but I, as far as, like you mentioned, like the physicality goes like the actual, um, what goes into it, you can't, you can definitely compare wrestling even higher, if not to the level of like a baseball of soccer, yeah. Definitely I, I, of, of those aspects, and I guess that's where, and I think we're just kind of thinking the same thing in two different ways. Because I, I, my definition of sport is there's a winner and a loser, you know, versus a this is a story that's being told side of things. But I see, I absolutely see where you're coming from too. So, awesome, awesome. But yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you for the discussion question, Alex. Said, uh, like I mentioned, send in more questions uh, you want us to talk about with our guests, uh, whatever you want to do at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, and go support that. Uh, there are a couple indie shows that are happening this weekend that I do want to plug uh, that uh, you should check out if you're around the areas. Uh, first of all, if you're, there's any indie wrestling show near, to, near you, go to it and go uh, support those guys. Uh, but here's a couple I know about. Uh, conveniently enough, we, had Evan, we have Evan on the show who uh, showed off in the beginning that Anarchy Championship Wrestling uh, title. Uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling is having an event this weekend on the 20th. Uh, Evan, I know you're not signed for the card, yet you have their heavyweight championship. That's kind of interesting. It's true. Um, it's not going to be there. I've, uh, I guess I should get this out for this point so people who tune in late can see it. Uh, so I have this. And I will not be in Texas this weekend, nor will any member of the submission squad. Uh, we feel we deserve a break. We've busted our ass for ACW for years. And uh, Darren, because it's 420 and hilarious, decides to run on Easter. Well, we at the squad household take Easter very seriously. Gary J is super excited about the Easter egg hunt we're going to have. And Davey Vega cannot stop eating Cadbury eggs. So this is a weekend for us. Pierre just loves to cook, and this is a big cooking holiday as well for us. Um, you know, Grandma Danger's coming over, Grandma Abernathy, uh, Uncle Vega, and what? Well, well, I mean, Gary's parents kind of are coming over. Uh, they fly in. Oh, I got. I see what you did there. Right. Thank you. So, uh, you know, no, the family is important to the squad. And uh, this holiday season, this coming weekend, we will be spending it with family in the household we all clearly live in. Because if you watch any of the videos, we all live together. Absolutely. So, yeah, no submission squad. And it looks like uh, Sean Vex will have to defend his championship without the actual championship belt. So it should be very interesting. um, There's a lot of other great matches on the card, though. Don't let us not being there dissuade you. From going to ACW, uh, there is Kyle Shire, Thomas Shire versus <laughs> Wananabe. I'm um, looking at the graphics. That seems to be Scotty and Steve versus the End of Days, Sky De La Cremosa, uh, Delilah Doom versus Dylan Dunbar, the Battle of Double Ds, if you will. Uh, I believe hey, there's hey. Matthew Palmer versus Barrett Brown, who I talked about earlier. Both of which get to the next one quickly. Uh, Jack Jamison versus Scott Summers. I hate both those guys. Keep going. Fuck them. <laughs> uh, Carson versus Masada. Masada. Hell of a dude. Uh, Solo Darling versus Pikachu. Not really thrilled about Pikachu being in the business, but whatever. There's Sean Vex with my belt and a weird mask. I don't understand that. Why, why is he the Punisher? I, I don't know. Kyle Hawk returning veteran versus Jim... Jimmy? Yeah, it's Jimmy. Okay. Love Claxton. And then we're back to Shire versus Watanabe. Um, can't say enough good things about James Claxton. Hoss. Fucking love watching him wrestle. If you listen to me do commentary over any of his matches, I love it. I love watching yeah, him hit people. I love watching people get hit. 
And James is very good doing it. So yeah, go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com uh, for more information on that. Uh, there's also a couple events, uh, other events coming up. I, I one that I do want to talk about a company I don't believe I mentioned yet, but I, I really want to. Uh, we mentioned Chikara, sort of the inverse of Chikara. If you if you like Chikara, but you want a more adult version, a more sexy version, I guess you could say, a more different version. And if you're in Connecticut this weekend, or uh, if you've been around the Can- Canada area, uh, Interspecies Wrestling is having an event in Danbury, Connecticut this weekend. Uh, should be a very interesting show. Interspecies Wrestling, if you've never seen it, is very different, uh, very off the wall. But it's always fun stuff. And and, and they, I know they have a lot of stuff online. So if you want to go see what you'd be getting yourself into uh go check that out uh it looks like a really fun show um in danbury connecticut for interspecies wrestling i believe that's on the 19th we had uh, our uh wrestlecon last year our booth was right beside their booth oh yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. They're very interesting very nice people uh representing there uh including uh, uh pinky sanchez got to talk with him a little bit i don't know if he's still with the group or anything i haven't caught up with them uh, but yeah yeah very fun but it seemed pretty cool i wanted to check them out I wonder if Danielle's going to that. That's around here. Right? Danielle Matheson. Canada? Canada? Canada, yeah. Good friend uh, Danielle Matheson. I'll have to have her on the show one day. Of the infamous Man Will Call podcast that Evan, I know you've been on with one Thomas Shire. Yeah. I think I'm going to be back sometime soon. She loves me. <laughs> Mostly because it's finally she has a wrestler who uses the name of the show on. And I think that's really the novelty there. That's very, yeah, very convenient. So. There you go. Uh, those are the indies I have listed, but like I said, go check out some indie wrestling yep. this weekend. Do it. It's fun stuff. Of course, our, um, RWA, rwalive.com with the yes. uh, Salute the Troops. It should be a pretty big time. Jesse Bell Smothers against a uh, friend of the show, Serafini. Uh, the first ever match for the newly christened uh, RWA women's title, which I think is the only women's title in the area. So awesome. that'll be interesting. Boot camp match, Brian Mitchell, friend of the old Mayhem show, and uh, Chris Taylor. Uh, both former WWE TNA guys. They've been around a good bit in a boot camp match. Very appropriate since it's a, it's a troop show. Uh, of course, WCW Lodi uh, is going to be there as well. Uh, Generation Dead, who we've been loving lately. G. Raver and Gory. Uh, Ash and Amherst, all, the, the whole crew down there. It's going to be a really fun show. Uh, there's awesome. actually this is this is fun. I found this out last week. Uh, the na- the national anthem is going to be sung by uh, 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 somebody from uh, season eleven of American Idol. Interesting. Yeah, that was like really we got that. Uh, I, I think she's <laughs> local or something. So I don't know. I'm just like this is all news to me. They're doing. They're actually going to have an induction ceremony um, uh, for for some new recruits, I guess, uh, for the army. Uh, and a few other kind of special things they'll have going on too. So it's not just wrestling. So, but it's it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. And it's going to be really big. Awesome, definitely go support them. RWALive.com. Uh, we do have a challenge for this week. Uh, if those that don't know our Indie Mayhem Challenge, basically what me and Sorg do is, uh, and we decide it differently every week. We pick a wrestler, uh, then we compose a playlist of their matches and, and video clips of them that you can find on youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And then we talk about them. And, uh, and this week's one was definitely one I wanted to check out. I was impressed with this person from their performances that I saw uh, WrestleMania weekend that I got to see live. Uh, and, and I was really into this guy and I wanted to bring, uh, to bring him up on the Indie Mayhem Challenge. And that is one Andrew Everett. Uh, uh, many may know him as the former Chiva Kid from National Pro Wrestling Day, the original National mm-hmm. Pro Wrestling Day. Uh, may, had a breakout performance there. Eventually uh, unmasked in his home promotion of CWF. Uh, and became Andrew Everett, and now he's breaking out into companies like CZW. Uh, I know he's wrestling for Pro Wrestling Gorilla now. Uh, tons of really good companies. Uh, Sorg, you've actually got—I mean, you got to see him as Chiba Kid live. Yeah, yeah, National and Pro that day. really stuck out because uh, they were probably like maybe third or fourth match in, and of a of a very very long day, uh, stuck in there with like a, a a six man tag, and it was just like wow, they're just kind of throwing everybody out of there out out there for whatever promotion they were representing. Um, and you can see that from the video, video, this guy does insane moves, um, and, and just out of nowhere, out of nowhere, like, you know, piqued our interest and, and we were sold on them, uh, after that. Um, and, and good to see that because the Shiva kid thing seemed a little odd. Good to see that he's kind of, uh, looks like segueing into a more normal look. 
you know, and pro hopefully getting out there a little bit more. Because I, I imagine, like, a, a gimmick like that would probably keep you down a little bit, you know, on where you can go. And now I see he's doing, like, some pretty, like, Drew Gulluck, who was uh, there as well at uh, Natural Pro Wrestling Day. Like, I wouldn't see a Chiva kid versus that guy. You know, I don't. I wouldn't mm -hmm. imagine. And of course, he's on the playlist here. Uh, in I think, uh, or what, I mean, there's something else. No, this is beyond wrestling. Yeah, beyond wrestling, yeah, is where yeah. you can see um, or Andrew Everett is against Drew Gulak. Yeah, so an um, interesting mixing of styles. And we talked about Drew uh, on past shows and how he's more of a, I guess, a bit of a grappler uh, kind of kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. but no, definitely fun. Uh, I I guess I can ask Evan. I don't know if you've uh, seen Everett or worked on a show with him before. Uh, I never have. Actually, I'm going to backtrack. I have a plug for a show this weekend. Thanks for asking yes. me, General. As a wrestler, thanks for asking me. Um, <laughs> I actually won't be there. Gary will be there. Proving Ground Pro Wrestling presents The Happening in Sherman, Illinois at the Sherman Athletic Club. Awesome. So if you want to see some Gary J, uh, I would encourage you to definitely go to that. And on a fun side note, Saturday, uh, the national anthem at the show I wrestled on was sung by an Elvis impersonator. Not quite American <laughs> Idol, but something fun nonetheless. But still, but still decidedly American, right? Exactly. Uh, sadly, I, I didn't get to watch it. I just heard about it and then immediately was mad at the promoter for not telling me that that had happened so I could go down and watch it. <laughs> uh, but back to Andrew Everett. Uh, I might have been on a card with him. I couldn't 100% tell you. Uh, sometimes when I used to work beyond, and still mm. will, um, there's a lot of guys, and sometimes I don't always have time to pay attention. Uh, yeah. I've been on plenty of shows with Drew Gulak, and uh, not, a nice, not enough nice things can be said about him and his style. Uh, it's a style I certainly appreciate. Uh, I don't get to grapple as much. Uh, I'm more of a ground and pound sort of guy, but mm. uh, I got to watch him at FIP over the weekend, and he just had great match night after night, two nights back to back, actually. And um, I really think the world of Drew Gulak, and uh, if he wasn't so high kind of in the indie world, he would have been in my top five to look out for around the world. I keep messing with my hair. I don't know why. It doesn't reach <laughs> anything. I'm touching it. Uh, but Andrew uh, Everett, uh, Pierre, uh, the prodigy, has seen a lot of his stuff and really enjoys him. And uh, I really enjoy Drew Gulak, so there you go. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, that was the Indie Mayhem Challenge for this week. Uh, Sorg, I think I may want to switch something up for next week. Okay. Switch it. Switch up the game plan, throwing people off guard. Um, I, 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 and maybe I'll tell you about that next week. <laughs> Format change. It's okay. We're still a young podcast, only 15 yeah. whippersnapper uh, I, episodes I, I, in. I have an idea for something, and maybe we can do that uh, next podcast uh, and see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, um, that was the Indie Mayhem Challenge for this week. Uh, and that was the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, Evan, thank you so much for being on. It was a pleasure uh, oh. to, uh, to talk the pro graphs with you. Yeah, I thought we were talking about way more stuff. Cool. All right. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> no, this was great. Um, yeah, so uh, if anyone wants to follow you on social media, uh, where can they find you? Uh, pistol underscore danger on Twitter, Facebook, Evangelistico period seven, right? That was it. I yeah, that sounds yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on Instagram, you can now find me on pistol underscore doodles, which I would encourage you to follow. I really do appreciate your Instagram page. Oh, I'm going to follow this one. <laughs> pretty great at drawing. I, have to confess. I don't mean to brag, but I do mean to brag. Uh, There's a couple of caricatures of, uh, of, uh, some people you may know. Yeah. And more to come. Uh, I just get lazy with drawings. Uh, you can find me on eBay as user sell. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you can just check out St. Louis Anarchy. I appreciate that because I love that place. Check out AIW, IWA Mid-South. Oh, I'm surprised we didn't talk about that. That was something that was recently a big hub above. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe – sorry, do you want to talk about something? Uh Quickly, sure. I, I'm just looking at his doodles on his Instagram. Definitely, definitely check out those doodles. But I know uh, uh, IWA Mid South had some controversy this past weekend. Ooh, what happened? Uh, uh, so um, Jeff Jarrett, you know Jeff Jarrett, right, Sork? I might have heard of him. You may have heard of the guy. Uh, I know he's shopping around. Uh, he's starting his uh, global 
Uh, it's, it's not Global Wrestling Federation. It's Global and then something with an Global Force Wrestling, um, I believe it is. Uh, so he's getting a lot of uh, indie bookings nowadays, uh, scouting talent and, and and looking at some companies. And he recently wrestled for IWA Mid South. I believe Evan, you were on that event uh, on Sunday, uh, and apparently uh, there was some backstage antics that uh, uh, have obviously Ian Rotten, who's the promoter there for IWA Mid South. Uh, uh, so apparently the reports are what's going around is that there was some issue with pay, uh, uh that, uh, he was, Jer was fronted a certain amount of money and then, uh, he was promised to get the rest of it in three days. Uh, and apparently Jared kind of caused the scene. Uh, also, uh, uh, Jared's wife, Karen Jarrett, uh, um, was reported to have uh, been, uh, a bit intoxicated as well. Uh, obviously, uh, not, not. All the, only the people backstage would know exactly what happened or, or what went down, obviously. Where um, would you find one of those people? Hey! Oh, hey! The hey, guy. guy. Uh, so, Evan, you were at that show. I absolutely was at that show. Um, a big controversy. Drake's last match, actually. Yeah. Was, uh, Drake awesome. Younger, uh, recent signing for WWE. Yes. Uh, so, obviously, I could tell a bunch of stories of what happened that night, but we'll go right to uh global force wrestling uh have you seen their hashtag hashtag join the schwartz it's nice <laughs> i've not seen that right I'll look at that <laughs> uh so i never personally saw jeff jarrett take a drink nor karen however i will say that they're it's a good way of saying this I mean, it's not like he's going to fucking hire me or anything. I, I doubt he'll even – sorry, guys. I doubt he'll even listen to this. Um, <laughs> hey, he's got 500 guys apparently on that roster, so – from reports. Yeah, going to be fucking great, I'm sure. What is uh, this, WCW? <laughs> uh, his manner changed as the night progressed. Um, so, like I said, I never saw him pick up a bottle um, or I never saw him drink. Uh, but his manners did change during the night. In the beginning, he was all fun. Uh, I joked with him and Karen briefly. Um, I told uh, – Karen and I joked about uh, blood getting in gear and how terrible it is to get out. And then uh, after Jeff had wrestled, uh, we were coming – I was coming around the corner. He was kind of going, and we were going in the same door. I, uh, I kind of slapped him on the back and said, hey, kid, not bad out there. You might make it in this business but not here. Oh, how fortuitous those words would become. <laughs> um, I heard Jeff screaming and raving and ranting, and I was in the room, and he started um, yelling at Reed Bentley about the money issue. Um, I believe he was paid half up front, it was kind of what I, what I got out of it, and he was due the rest of the day up. Um, and as a wrestler uh, who, who sometimes has not gotten paid, I know just how mad you can be. And I can only imagine what Jeff would make. I think the internet has it at like twelve to $1,500. I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, he made 750 up front, allegedly, um, and then the rest. And I don't see why people would doubt that because – if you're Jeff Jarrett and you're like, well, here's my fee. I want half of it up front. And you don't get half of it up front, then you don't go to the show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not like, yeah. oh, no, they didn't pay me up front, but they'll definitely pay me the full amount after I fucking wrestled. So I 100% believe, Ian, that he was paid up front, half of it. Um, Ian then says that he forgot to take money out of the PayPal. I 100% believe that. Not because I work for him, but because I have done that. I have forgotten to mm. take PayPal out of an account, my account for not wrestling, but for like other shit I needed. So like, you know, I go to the store and I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. Oh, where the fuck is my money? Oh yeah. I didn't get it out of PayPal. Um, a couple of promoters that I've worked for have done that. It, it, it is something that happens. It's something that's yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen that on my end too. So yeah, it's just like something small that you don't think about it, but it's a huge effect. Um, so I 100% believe Ian in this. Now, uh, I saw him and John Calvin get into an altercation, uh, just yelling at it. Jeff just got into his face and just yelled at him, spouting uh, conspiracies like how this is everybody's fault. 
uh, you know, you, you, you're in on it. This guy's in on it. That guy's in on it. And, uh, I saw that again. I, I never saw him pick up a bottle, but his manner definitely changed as the night progressed. He became, uh, increasingly aggressive. Also, I never saw him lay his hands on John Calvin. Um, once the screaming and shouting happened, uh, I tried to get out of the room as quickly as possible. That's not my business. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I don't really stick my nose in things that aren't my business. And uh, Reed was handling it. It was it is Reed's business. So I was okay. Well, I've seen enough of Jeff making him seen, let's say, of himself. That uh, I'm going to go find Gary, Kyle, and Pete, and the prodigy uh, who I rode with, and we're going to watch Drake and BJ because Drake Younger is a great guy and probably one of the best guys in indie wrestling and deserves everything he's got positively. Um, so we watched that, but you could hear Jeff in the back. That's how loud he was. As the match was going on, you could hear him screaming. And then, uh, eventually Ian, who was also watching because he pretty much brought Drake up in wrestling. Uh, it, it's a fair thing. I think I could say, but, uh, maybe, maybe other people would disagree. Uh, eventually went backstage to try and figure out what the problem was. And then he found out, then he came forward. And that's, I guess, when he realized that they'd forgotten to take the PayPal out and uh, told Jeff he'd pay him. And Jeff was not thrilled with it because you could continually hear him screaming. Uh, hopefully Smart Mark can cut that out of the DVD because the match itself is really damn good. Um, and then the match ended. Drake's giving his goodbye speech. Uh, Karen Angle storms the ring and um, cuts a promo letting everybody know Again, not their business, uh, letting everyone know that Ian hadn't paid them that night um, what he owed, I guess, because he obviously paid them half up front. So it was a damn shame. Uh, Drake didn't deserve it. She also unnecessarily, like, she took a shot at Drake, which I didn't appreciate. I didn't appreciate the whole scenario, obviously. But there was an unnecessary shot at Drake, and I hope they cut it out. And I'm sure they will. It's uh, she. She tells people how much of a piece of shit Ian is, which he isn't. Um, again, early in the podcast, I said I've always Ian's always been straight with me and the squad, and he has, and he's always paid us what he always told us he would pay us. Mm. Um, and she just said, uh, "Okay, now I'm done saying what I have to say. Now I'm done burying him. Go back and try and put him over." And she handed the mic back to Drake, and that was just really unnecessary. Uh, of a shot to take. Like, if you want people to know your business, it's fine. It's none of their business to begin with, but sure, it's whatever. Uh, yeah. But don't bring other people into this that are, that weren't involved. Drake Younger isn't in the conspiracy to make sure that Jeff Jarrett didn't get paid that night. Uh, I know he yelled at Christian Rose, too. Christian Rose isn't a member of the conspiracy. John Calvin isn't a member of the conspiracy. Uh, it's not a conspiracy. Um, again, I never saw him pick up a drink or anything else, and uh, but their 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 moods definitely changed. Their manner changed over the night, and it was really unfortunate. Um, yeah, I mean, again, never saw him pick up a drink, but um, yeah, and I honestly believe Ian will pay them in the two to three days if he hasn't already. That's he says he will because. You know, kind of like the squad where we got uh, a bad reputation at Jakara. Ian got a bit of a bad reputation. And I mean, you know, yeah. not for not. You know, we had decidedly a bad match on the night of Jakara. Ian made some questionable choices in his life. And he's trying to make amends for him. And he's he's always done right by me and a lot of the guys I know. And so... And it seems, it seems to me at least that IWA is definitely coming back a bit strong. And I've... And, so far yeah. from the stuff I've heard, I've heard nothing but good things from the regime, I guess you could say, currently for IWA Mid-South. Uh, I would back it up. Uh, I actually did um, commentary from show end to show beginning, not thunder after thunder, but the show before that. Uh, so you can hear all my witty uh, remarks and quirky comments there. I, I recommend picking it up. It actually was a really good show, too, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's kind of what happened. I didn't get too terribly involved. I saw the beginning where he was just yelling at Reed about the money, and then that that translated to John Calvin. Again, I never saw him hit John Calvin or snatch the glasses off his face. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I did see John Calvin without glasses for a while, uh, but had no idea that Jeff had taken them. And at the end of the night, he had them again. Um, I know he made John Calvin's girlfriend uh, cry, and that's not cool. I mean, you never want to be such a big dick you make people cry. Unless right. you're Chuck Taylor and they're small children, then, I mean, that's acceptable. But then again, you can make money off that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, making small children cry is a great money-making uh, pyramid. <laughs> Um, but that's, that's kind of what I saw. That's my take on it. And, um, as of right now, uh, you know, I'll defend IWA should the need arise. Should I need to throw on a cape and a mask and go to Tennessee or wherever Jeff Jarrett is? And I don't know, just yell at him back. I got to fight him. I'm a grown ass man. Uh, I, you could make him cry. I could, could I could try. I could absolutely try but I think his promotion is going to make him do that himself. Oh, hey, uh, oh wow. But yeah, uh, and definitely a lot of people coming out, uh, people that are a part of that show. Uh, uh, a lot of the, a lot of them uh, in defense of Ian and, you know, there's another perspective. So definitely. And just a week after I praised Jeff Jarrett's performance at WrestleCon. Son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> Fuck Jeff Jarrett. Funny enough, Jojo Bravo, one of his favorite wrestlers, Jeff Jarrett. Jojo's Fuck favorite him. is Jeff Jarrett. And, and Oh, I know. Sad days. I know. I hope he listens to this so he knows how much of an asshole Jeff Jarrett can be when drinking. If never saw him pick up a drink, uh, how much of an asshole Jeff Jarrett can be after his mood has changed. Uh, again, like I said, I we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so before, I guess. So you know. Awesome. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely. That's a good way to. End it off here for this week's Indie Mayhem show. Uh, Sorg, uh, I'm, I'm assuming they'll see us next week. Uh, tenet- uh, guest yeah. tentative, but I have a certain someone in mind. Awesome. Awesome. Good. Yeah, we'll double shot the Texas side or wherever you're gonna, you, you get these people from. I don't know. Make it another make it another from the St. Louis end. I'll, I'll oh, just say that. Maybe. Do I know them? You may know them. Awesome. I love when we uh, talk, talk video games. We still got like another what hour to go? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we got enough of that in tonight. Um, I'm sure. Now, well, I'm sure you have an open invitation to let's play. There you um, go. Yeah, let's play. Let's play. Let's play I'll have you on. I'm sure. I think they'd have fun talking with you. Absolutely. Let's play Mega Man X because that is a great game. I do have that on my iPhone, actually. Really? How is it on the iPhone? Uh, it's a little weird because they reformatted it. This is a different show. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> Sorg is all ready to fucking go Damn into it. it. Damn amazing. it. He almost got me. Um, anyways, yeah. this has been your Indie Mayhem show, and I'm going to talk about Mega Man after we go off the air. Um, but you can find us. We're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com for this and other shows, including our TNA, WWE, Raw wrap-ups, all that kind of stuff, and Wrestling Mayhem Show proper Drop us a line at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 412-206-WMS0. And, of course, you can find this in audio and video form on iTunes, YouTube, and uh, the iHeartRadio app, of all things. Um, and you can join us here live around 11 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com or just get the link over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Um, and with that, thanks, Evan, for joining us. Go check him out at pistol underscore danger and check him out on facebook as well and of course amon's at amon to please check out his promotion with uh, inspire pro wrestling that he helps out with and of course all of our stuff's over at sorgatronmedia.com with everybody that we're hanging out with uh so until then uh support some indie wrestling we'll see you next time never said i was a gangster or thug but i'm an animal for the taste of the sick 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 you know how i act now if you got a problem come and see if i'm a